We made a promise uh, a long time ago to bring Jews and make this a land for Jews that want to live here, to be able to bring them back from wherever they come from. I think that this is one of the last rescue efforts from what I've learned in having been in Ethiopia. And the message is we have a chance to complete the promise, not just to bring them here, the Ethiopians, but also to be able to uh, absorb them into Israeli life. <laughs> Uh, we made a promise to not have starving Jews in the former Soviet Union and as recently as last summer I certainly had an opportunity to see the really poor Jews in the former Soviet Union who I'm sure don't have enough to eat. The Ethiopian Jews, the Falas Mor, about to leave Ethiopia are our are, are brethren and uh, in fact, uh, they're not leaving Egypt, they are leaving Ethiopia, similar to the story in the, in the Haggadah and that we read at the Passover Seder. And we're making a modern day exodus take place. And it's remarkable to think about it in, in terms of that, but also in terms of the fact that um, this is the last group of Jews that will need to leave Ethiopia. And that's an, a pr pretty amazing feat that our American Jewish uh, community, our North American Jewish community, has accomplished over the last period of time. The life in Ethiopia uh, is incomprehensible. Uh, it is so poor that 95% of the population are living in huts. They are living without running water. They're really living without any bath facilities. They're living without any electricity. Uh, in many places, there's raw sewage in the streets. I wasn't mentally prepared to see what I saw. Uh, we're giving the Jews a great opportunity to, uh, to follow Shmura, to, to come to Israel. The unique aspect of, uh, of uh, the involvement of UJC in this uh, area of Ethiopian Aliyah uh, ties for me personally to one of our volunteer leaders in New York at UJC and as well as in Pittsburgh where I was before coming to UJC and that's Karen Shapira. She made it uh, her business to get to whatever part of the world it was to examine the needs that were present. So in the case of uh, Ethiopian Jewry, she had an airplane, she went to Ethiopia. And she went there to learn. She didn't go there to tell them anything. She went there to learn. And she came back, I think, infused with uh, uh, her usual sense of passion about uh, the injustice that exists, uh, the fact that uh, these individuals are living in a society where there's absolutely no possibility of success. Uh, I think that that really drove us in a whole variety of ways uh, in terms of our own agenda. It helped to create something called the Ethiopian National Project. It's hard to me to talk about Karen. Karen, he, she is personally my best friend. And it's a great, a great, a great loss to me, to the community, that she was the one she pushed and, and was behind the Ethiopian National Project and the Ethiopian Olympic. Now her dream is, 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 is going on. Now I'm very proud that her beginning is now on the way to succeed and it will not be very easy for me and for Ethiopian Olim to tell that Karen is not with us. I hope her children, her husband will be successors of Karen and go back to the community and we need them 
and Karen is always with us, and now she's hearing us too. And uh, I don't know how to tell. I have no word. Thank you. Operation Promise is also, one component of it has to do with Ethiopia. The other uh, component of it has to do with what's necessary to complete the promise to uh, Jews in the former Soviet Union. Uh, when you travel to Russia, and I've been there uh, four times, and you have an opportunity to make home visits, you begin to realize uh, what it must be like to be an elderly Jew that has survived communism and to now be so poor, to have so little money, that they can't afford the basic necessities of life. There's no social service network. There's no safety net. The needs here are so great. Uh, we do a lot of work and give money in the United States for people that have needs, and that money does go to Israel. But the needs here in the emerging Jewish population are greater than in other places. And I would like to get involved in giving money to other places that aren't Jewish, but I'm not as learned in those areas and would have to be educated to, to, that, to those causes. I've done, I, I can't even count how many home visits in the last couple of years in different countries throughout the former Soviet Union. And every time I do it, when I walk up the, the stairs, of however many flights it is, two, three, four flights, and visit that elderly person in their apartment, I, I can't help but be reminded of, of my grandmother. Uh, and because she, she is my grandmother. And, uh, you know, it's just by luck, by chance, that my family happened to come here and isn't still there. And I want to care for her the same way I would care for my own grandmother. The most compelling home visits that I ever had was uh, with uh, Karen Shapira. And so it was clearly up three or four flights uh, of stairs in a building uh, uh, that was uh, not in good shape. And we went into a home where we delivered a food parcel. And as we wound down this visit, uh, Karen in her inimitable fashion looked at this woman and said, so if you could have anything in the world, what would you want? And the lady just thought, and she thought, and uh, she eventually said, I think I'd want an orange. And do I know anybody else in the world, at least amongst my friends, acquaintances, people who live in my community, who if somebody said, oh, here's the magic button, push it, you get anything you want, they would ask for an orange. And we have the ability to buy oranges for those people. We're pretty lucky.